If you've got a chain that you're scared to touch with your bare hands, then you've come to the right place. This is a basic guide to the world of chain waxing. It's a basic guide because the full thing sits at cyclingtips.com, a 7,000 word monster that goes into every detail you could ever imagine. Here, I'm gonna quickly dive into what chain waxing is, and then I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so what is chain waxing? Basically, it's the idea of taking a sterile chain and then melting it into a molten wax. The process of chain waxing may seem really tedious, but it has many benefits. It's extremely clean, it's extremely efficient, and those two together mean you save money in the long run. Not only will that cleanliness save you money by not wearing down your cogs or chain, it'll also mean that you won't be scared to touch your chain. And better yet, you won't need to degrease your drivetrain or keep up with the regular maintenance that is often associated with keeping a clean chain. Sure, you will have to re-wax a chain from time to time. To clean a wax chain, you simply just need boiling water. All right, so that's the why. Now on to the how. Chain waxing is basically broken into two steps. First, you need to get the chain extremely clean, sterile clean, like enough, clean enough that you could lick it. Secondly, you need to dip the chain in the molten wax. In both cases, this is done with the chain off the bike. And definitely getting that chain extremely clean, that's the toughest step. The easiest way to get started with chain waxing is actually to buy a pre-wax chain. Here, all the initial cleaning is done for you, the chain has already been waxed, you can just put it on your bike, start riding, and then when that wax wears off, then you can look to reapply the wax. You won't ever need any solvents, any chemicals, all you'll need is the wax and a way to melt it on. If that doesn't sound like your way and you'd like to use your own chain or a new chain that you've just bought that hasn't been waxed, then you will need to use some solvents to get all the grease off that chain. I'll show you how. There's a few different processes here. Some people like to use an ultrasonic cleaner, which uses sound waves to get the chain really clean. Others like to use manual labor. I've got a parts washer here. I've got an ultrasonic cleaner. And personally, I actually quite like using jars. And jars is what I'm gonna to recommend to pretty much everyone else out there. You'll need a strong solvent to remove the existing mess. If that's a brand new chain, that is the stock factory grease. You need that all gone, and it can be a nightmare to remove. That's where the strong solvent comes in and you'll need to soak it overnight to ensure it's all gone. So speaking of the strong solvent, I recommend mineral turpentine, aka terps, uh, white spirits, or mineral spirits if you're in the US. Uh, it's commonly available at pretty much any hardware store or uh, grocery store even. And this stuff, definitely use precaution when using it, dispose of it responsibly, but this will get your chain clean. So if you're using a chain that is used, then you can simply drop your chain into a jar of this solvent and give it a shake. Uh, pour out that solvent and replace with fresh solvent and repeat. Keep repeating until the solvent becomes clear. For those cleaning a brand new chain, I recommend leaving the chain to soak in the solvent overnight. Then flush and repeat until the new solvent remains clear. In either case, please dispose of your solvents responsibly. Following that first step, your chain will look good enough to eat off of, I promise you. But there is still one more cleaning step. You need to get that chain sterile, and that means removing any of the residue left over from the previous solvent or uh, from any lubricant that may still be there. For that, we move to a different solvent. Uh, it's denatured alcohol, or in Australia, that's methylated spirits. Uh, you can also use acetone or isopropyl alcohol, uh, but both of those options are extremely expensive, so best avoid. Either way, you want a solvent that'll burn off without leaving a residue behind. Like before, use a container to agitate and shake the chain in the fluid. Repeat the process with new fluid until there's no discoloring or dirt seen. Now you're ready to let that chain dry and prepare for waxing. Slow cooker is easily the best way to do this. Uh, it'll stop you from overheating the wax and it'll mean you don't really have to watch what you're doing. You can just turn it on, walk away, leave the chain on there and come back and your chain will be waxed. To do this, I like to grab a little bit of bent wire. An old coat hanger is perfect for this. Uh, and that you use to loop the chain through it. And that chain is then sitting on your little handle that then gets put into your wax pot and let to stew. Place your chain onto the top of the wax and allow it to melt in. This can take up to an hour. There's no need to watch it. Once the wax has turned to liquid, use your coat hanger to stir and agitate the chain in the wax. 
You should see air bubbles escaping as you do this. Let the chain sit in the wax for a further few minutes and then repeat this process again. Now gently lift the chain from the wax and hang by the wire handle. I like to hang it above a rag just in case of wax strips. Now allow the chain to cool. Once cool, you'll need to break up the links. You'll find that they would have gone really stiff between the wax joins. Uh, and this is perfectly normal. Break it up manually. You can wrap it around a seat post, around any sort of round objects. A broom handle works great. Uh, and then once you get it on the bike, you'll find that those stiff links might cause a few jumps and similar. This will go away very quickly. You'll want to use a chain quick link to ensure this process is easy in future. And we have a dedicated article on that topic. So that's the basic process. Keep in mind, that's all the first time around. The second time you go to rewax a chain, you don't need those solvents anymore. It's just a matter of pouring some boiling water over the chain if it's dirty, or if it's not too dirty, you can just literally put it straight back into the wax pot. Let it melt in, agitate, repeat, put back on the bike, and you're good to go. All right, so that's the basic guide to chain waxing. As mentioned before, there is a very detailed guide at cyclingtips.com. It's linked in the description below. If you like this content, give us a thumbs up. We'll see you out there.